Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. The free October 3rd markets outlook. Is it different this time? Yep, this time we're watching the bond market see if it could save the equity markets again like it has for the last 12 years. To let you know, I got to promote myself. Brecher Trading, 10 day free trial, but I made the link a heck of a lot easier. Just press on there. It'll go to your landing page and it'll tell you a lot more what you get for the free trial. So just try to take advantage of that if you can make some money from this video. Remember the video last week was three reasons. I finally had three reasons to short the market. That worked pretty well. All right, so let's get into what we're talking about in here. Number one, you know, I know this has been a big bull market in world markets everywhere, except maybe Asia. So just keep that in mind in there that Asia has had its own problems, but I'm talking about the U.S. markets at the moment. Straight up, as you see, hardly a sell-off. Obviously, what you did last year with the virus. What happened with the virus? Market sold off, and what did the bond market do? The bond market went straight up. That's right, 2020 went from 155 to 185. So then there's nowhere else to put your money. Yep, so what happened? Markets rallied, equity markets rallied. This is what I want to show you and why I think it could be different this time. Here's the T-bomb futures on the right. This is a weekly chart. On the left is the DBC. This is the commodity ETF that includes oil. So number one, Pioneer Natural Resources, PXD, came out this weekend, said they're not going to adjust their production if our oil prices is high. They're going to depend on OPEC. They're going to do their own thing. So the first thing I'm watching in here is definitely crude oil. And crude oil, big proponent of what's going on with the DBC. And you'll see the crude oil. And forget that, that was that anomaly in 2000. If you put this on a monthly chart, look at that air hold of 100. Now it's overbought, as you see, it hardly fits on the chart on a monthly MACD. So it might take some time, but over that, that would go with the same theory of DBC that includes oil, that commodity ETF going to 24 and a half. That's 20%. So we've been long since in here. So just keep that in mind in there. Those, we have some swing trades and those have worked great. But this is where I think you get in trouble. So most of the time the bond market has sold off in the last 12 years, it's been because the economy is strengthened. So then the bond market sells off a little. It's not because of inflation. In fact, since 2013, 2012, the DBC has gone straight down, as you see. Had a little pop up here, 2016, and sure enough, you had bonds have a little sell-off. But it wasn't much of one. That wasn't much of one at all. And as you see, the sell-off into 2020, you had a massive bond rally. This time, this is above everything but the bond market is still up here. This corresponds to about July, 2014. July, 2014, here was bonds, right there. Yeah, that's only 12 points lower. And the point is that if this gets this high, then I think it's more likely this head and shoulders on the bonds breaks. And this goes to 140. Now, why is that important in here? Well, let me show you. You take the S&P on the left. There have been a lot of times that the S&P on a weekly chart looked like a big old head and shoulders. We know all the people on the internet and all that that show the big old head and shoulders and all this uh, all the time. They're always bearish. So you see this one right here. There's a good one right here. Everybody thought that was a uh, head and shoulders. This one, 2014, 2016, everybody thought that was a head and shoulders. But what's the difference? Back then, in 2014 to 2016, the bond market had a spectacular rally. So every sell-off had a rally of the bonds. And that's why the market sold off. And then when the bond market broke to new highs, that was it. The equity markets broke to new highs. So the point is that these bonds have given the equity markets life ever since the old 2008, 9, and 10 big old recession. This time, we're going up like this on the S&P, but this time, you're going down on the bonds. You're not getting any save. 
So like I said, you have the stick save right there. Bonds now are where they were prior to what happened with the whole coronavirus. It's the point of no return. If the DBC breaks up on that monthly chart, then I think the bonds are more likely to break this head and shoulders, as you see there, and go all the way down to 135. As you see, there really isn't a lot of support on the bonds on the way down. So we're talking about in this zone. And if that happens, I think you see the S&P finally have a real bear market, which it, it had with a virus. Like I said, that was an anomaly, but a 10 to 20% sell-off. At the minimum, the S&P could go to the 4180, 200 day. But if these bonds break that much and break to here, where all the way down here, then that's like the equity markets could be all the way here to 3350. That's a big move, that's 30%. So definitely watch the DBC. That's the first thing I'm gonna be watching in there. You can watch crude oil. Crude oil is a great tell for you, not gold, but there are two things actually. One of them is natural gas. So I am in awe of how high natural gas futures have gone. That hits consumers' pocketbooks directly. That's what I call parabolic. When was the last time on a monthly chart that natural gas has been this high? Well, guess what? It hasn't. This is it. It's got to hurt bonds. It has to hurt consumer spending, especially if we have a cold winter. The crude oil, like I said, is already broken up and is right at a crux where there's very little resistance on the upside if it breaks that. And if it breaks that, then DBC will probably break that and the bonds will break down. You can see it even on a monthly. I showed you a weekly, definitely all the way down to the moving average down to 140. That's 20 points. So have a great one. If you make some money off of this, like I said, uh, sign up for the free trial. There's one other thing, though, that i got to make clear. Markets don't go straight down. So when you go to a daily chart, the S&P right now, sure, that looks toppy. Sure that it's worked off, it's oversold this time. By not getting back over this red 50 moving average, no doubt about it. But you know how it is with these. They have a habit of confusing the bears. Definitely, we could go back to the 50. But the, the difference this time is if this bond market on the right refuses any kind of rally, then I don't think this is retaining the 50. Have a good one. Talk to you later.